Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm a political scientist and spiritual advisor. Welcome to my channel. I've been discussing current events and everything going on and why the world's falling apart and trying to put things back together, kind of make a roadmap. Hold my hand. I got you, boo. We're going to do this together. So, uh, a lot of my channel has been a variety show and that's been on purpose stay with me it is an attempt to build culture because i saw it all falling apart uh 2020 pandemic you may have been there maybe not maybe you're in the future watching this but the whole everything got upside down uh, my husband and i moved um our jobs were just everybody's job was disintegrated I moved to the country. Long story short, I ended up substitute teaching out in a very rural area for a little while. And I taught grades from first grade all the way to 12th grade. And it's from this experience and from my other knowledge and experience that I've come up with a plan like this solution i guess that we could implement to help some of these underdeveloped youth that um they are well the whole broad spectrum of it right now in the immediate there's no um affordable housing for people who graduate people are um very delayed right now in all grades so at 18 they have no idea what they're gonna do so <laughs> that was a whole lot of information all at once but you know went through eight so let's get into this um this solution is brilliant if i do say so myself because it not only helps uh, these children that were delayed developmentally, education-wise, socially, um, to have something to do when they get out of school, but also it helps resolve some of the inconsistencies and the answers the um, very real skepticism of the 19th Amendment and voting rights and how to repeal that would just be ridiculous, um, but I think there's a way that we can replace it. So, and it also helps with immigration. Like I said, it's brilliant. Okay, let's get into it. Let's see if I decide to edit this or not. There we go. Okay. So, <laughs> this political strategy for youth uh, would essentially um, be along the lines of service guarantee citizenship. We're going to put a, a blood, sweat, and tear or effort um, into producing for our nation. So this would be um, two years post high school and this um, each young adult would be analyzed on a case by case of what they plan to do for the next two years. Um, this also is not to be treated as a punishment or as any kind of a sentence for wrongdoing or anything like that. This is a <laughs> to be looked at as a positive thing. We can utilize peer pressure in a positive way if we can uh, get other youth to say, hey, look how this program has helped me not be in poverty and be on the streets and be struggling. So this is the options that we would offer to a high school graduate um, at 18 years old, 19 years old, ideally, um, there would be a two-year military service requirement, which would be your typical enlisted. Um, I would, in the cases of the two-year, um, I guess, yeah, enlistees, there would be limited careers they can choose. And to get some of the other higher tier jobs that would require more technical training, then that would require a four or six year contract. And to give you a real world 
example of this. I was in the military. The type of job that I had required near, I think it was maybe a 10, 11 month year long technical training, which is quite a lot of investment from the military versus some other people who had training that maybe only lasted two or three months. So those jobs that do require the 10 month training to get you the actual certificates to do um, jobs on the, I will say real world, outside world, the civilian world, <laughs> to do those jobs, that is going to require a four or six year commitment to the military, any branch of the military. Also, on a side note that I feel like the Space Force needs an academy. If anyone's listening that can do this, we need to make that happen. Okay. Other options for that would be Peace Corps. I don't know a whole lot about the Peace Corps, but maybe we could uh, solve that as well and see if we can actually use it in a humanitarian sense instead of what we're doing now. So uh, another option, which I love, is uh, farm work because not enough people have been exposed to, myself included, getting uh, their hands dirty and actually growing some of their own food. We're very disconnected from that in modern society. And to uh, train people in horticulture and how to grow their own crops and get them just familiar with that, like the training for that alone would be um, that to your time span because there's so much to learn with that. So just getting that experience um, would actually also help redistribute the population and expose other cultures to, which is happens in the military anyway, but I just feel like with the farm work, you're, you're staying within the United States and you are uh, getting a glimpse at life perhaps that you wouldn't necessarily have the opportunity to. Okay, others obviously, passing college that is um and a lot of this which i i will say this towards the end but tennessee was um is where i'm from where i'm at right now too uh it was a very inspirational for a lot of this because we now offer schooling uh free two-year schooling to state schools i think that's what the stipulations are for um all uh, citizens. Yes. I'm not sure the actual stipulations on that, but I know a lot of people that have used that scholarship to go to school for free, which is great. So, um, that would also be an exemption or, you know, one of the options rather. Um, and I was looking at this cause there has to be some kind of exemptions health wise. Um, I feel like there, everything is going to be a case by case basis. Obviously there's going to be people with different developmental challenges and things like that. Um, next, <laughs> if there is a, um, I don't necessarily want to penalize anyone who has a job lined up with this either. This isn't about creating, um, people that are subservient to the government. This is about creating productive citizens. If they already have a job lined up then, or if they are within a family business or are starting a business, have started their own business, have something secured in the private sector, that would be also a, um, an option. And I'm saying option because the default obviously would be military service, the two year military service and all these other are, I guess, exemptions from that. Okay. Um, Lastly, and this probably is an exhaustive list because I'm only one woman and I can only think so <laughs> uh, outside the box, but uh, married women, because at 18, you're a full grown married woman. And if you want to get married and have babies at 18, 19, 20, then you should be able to do that. I feel like promoting the family is definitely essential to this whole rebuilding plan of society. Um, so sure that's all I have to say. Uh, also, after something like this would be implemented, we could look at abolishing social programs and replacing it perhaps with the UBI. I don't know. Um, that is, oh, I do want to say this too. I did not, I know 
some of this I came up with in my own mind, but I do want to do a disclaimer and say I I do not remember where I heard uh, the framework initially for this, but I do remember someone told me about an idea for creating a, a government social program for participation uh, directly after high school is kind of an alternative. So I do want to make that disclaimer that I'm not trying to claim that all of this is brand new ideas that came up in my head. It's kind of just a compilation of what I've observed and from what I've studied and seen through history. And I think we could definitely build some positive nationalism from this too. <sighs> Bye. Be nice to each other.